First, I wanted to share with you guys how I make the teal solution, which is this little bottle here. All, I'm, all I do is add about one to two micro scoops um, in alcohol and shake it up really well. Warm alcohol works best. Okay, so let's start off by mixing up our royal blue crazy colors. Oh, you guys, I love this dye. It's just absolutely gorgeous. We are going to take approximately one and a half micro scoops. These scoops actually are given to you when you order with crazy colors. Um, and so we're just going to take one and a half scoops of that into a little plastic container. And with some distilled water, uh, now some of the colors you do have to use hot water really hot water um, but for this one it actually mixes very easily with just room temperature distilled water for me and I'm just mixing it until it's all mixed together and you don't need a whole lot of water you just need enough so that it will all dilute okay so now we're going to take our sodium carbonate and our sodium bicarbonate um, or baking soda um, this here is the sodium bicarbonate or baking soda baking soda is actually the same thing or a sodium bicarbonate is the same thing as this uh, sodium carbonate the only difference is there is no water in sodium carbonate so there's a lot of really cool um, videos that'll show you how you can make sodium carbonate out of sodium bicarbonate if you are interested. Okay, so we are going to add our baking soda and add our uh, dye into the um, mixer. As you can see, I made a little bit of a mess, but it wipes up very easily with water. Um, in a rag and so we're just gonna mix that so that the color goes nicely and uh, mixes or breaks up nicely into the um, baking soda mixture now as you can see there are still lots of little lumps and that is okay for this recipe and that's because we're gonna be adding more liquids um, but you just want to kind of give it a nice dispersed start we are now adding our cream of tartar and we are adding our cornstarch and we're mixing that all together and those are going to actually help aid in um, hardening the product really nicely mix it mix it mix it well and like I said before um, your mixer is actually going to do all the work for you once you add your liquid uh, in there, but you want to kind of help it out and disperse out the um, products, the dye some. And finally, we're going to add our glycerin.
Okay, and now we're gonna add half of our cocoa betain, or also known as bubble up if you buy it from WSP. And we're gonna mix that really well. And the reason why I'm only adding half of it is because it really does um, matter what your climate is. If, you're, if you have a more humid climate, um, you can actually get to where we're trying to get to relatively quickly and so you want to start off with a little and then just work it in there and as you can see this is really crumbly and very dry so um, I need it more but the no-no is that I added all of it and I should not have um, you want to still just add a little at a time to get to the consistency because as the um, beater whips it it starts to break that moisture into the powdered um, solution or the powdered mixture and the glycerin and so as you can see now it's really creamy and that's not what we want so we are just going to fix it by adding a little bit more sodium carbonate remember sodium carbonate is the one that does not hold any extra moisture in it so it's the byproduct of the baking soda so we're adding a little bit I'm adding about a fourth of a cup I believe um, and you're just gonna work a little bit in at a time if you overdo it it's fine um, until you get to a thicker consistency you will understand um, when we get to that stage it will be crumbly but it will be moist I know that's really strange but <laughs> you'll see as you can see it's starting to stick to the sides and um, that's how I know that it's getting to the where I want it to be and as you can see now it's more like a play-doh a nice soft dough consistency that's what we want okay so now we have to determine what kind of stick we're going to use to hold this um, I'm going to actually be using the paper but you could use paper or plastic or you could actually use like popsicle sticks I'm now going to just take a little piece of wax paper and put it over my um, my scale so that I can measure out how much product I'm going to need for each um, of the little geoids. Um, and then I will put it on the baking sheet. As you can see it's a doughy consistency it will start to dry out as you let it sit but um, if you work you know moderately quickly you're fine you still have plenty of play time with this um, with this dough and all I'm doing is I'm pushing and creating a long little oblong shaped nothing special I'm using my fingers almost like to press um, and create indentions and then I'm going to I'm adding actual an actual crater in the center and that's where we're gonna put our salt so you just kind of press it into your stick and then lay it down and press in yourself a little crater and manipulate the dough however you need to to make it look more like a geoid for you and it's really easy Okay, now that we have our all of our little geoids made we're going to press in the salt 
um, into the little craters and you're just gonna press it into each of the little cavities um, my suggestion is that if you plan on making a lot of these because I made um, I made one batch before this I do suggest um, and keeping in mind that of course I was knew I was filming a video and so I was doing a lot of extra stuff in the background that I normally wouldn't be doing um, if you are planning on making these um, you may want to work in smaller batches until you get used to them and we're finishing it off with that beautiful teal dye and I'm just kind of spraying the sides a little bit and all that's doing is creating like dimension um, you can do this you don't have to you will see a little bit of that teal when you run it over the water okay and of course no geode is complete without a little gold around those edges so I'm starting out with a little 24 karat uh, gold mica and I'm just kind of haphazardly dusting it around the edges. It does not have to be perfect. Um, the wonderful thing about every time I make a geoid is I don't have to be perfect um, because it just comes together. <laughs> uh, the more imperfect is almost how perfect it looks. And of course, because I am so extra and I can't resist, I am going uh, following it up with um, the beautiful Super Sparkle by Crafter's Choice. It's such a beautiful, beautiful gold and it adds that little bit of extra depth and sparkle. And I'm kind of just throwing a little bit on the top just for the heck of it. And I'm going to finish it off with the Eco Glitter by Brambleberry in the gold. The rose gold glitter it's just absolutely gorgeous that's it it's so easy thank you guys for coming to hang out with me for these 12 minutes or so if you enjoyed this video please like comment subscribe share all that good stuff and I'll see you guys in the next video